we're, we're sort of three or four generations into a movement that has disrupted that connection. And so, so many people are walking around saying, what's the big deal? My, I was, you know, put into daycare and my mother wasn't there for me and I don't need that. And so my baby doesn't need that either. And so what Erica is saying here is that that that's actually evidence of a larger disorder that the actual problem that was created was created in your past, you know? And so because you're two or three generations removed from that, you, you are now assuming that that's normal. You're assuming that basically attachment disorder is normal. And I think she's suggesting that there is such a powerful bond between a mother and a child that is sort of God given and God designed that it creates the kind of emotional structure within a baby and then a child that they can then bond and attach with other in other relationships throughout their lives. And if you, if, if this, if d detachment becomes normative, then we're essentially damaging whole generations of people as opposed to having invented a brave new world that's actually better for women, children, for everyone. So yeah, Justine, what does this stir up for you? Well, I think we just don't want to like see the consequences of our choices. We want to do what we want to do and not think about how that might affect somebody else, especially our children. And we see all throughout the Bible how things affect generations beyond us. And so I think a big part too is you have to die to yourself, which we do not like to do. We want to do, like Michelle was saying, be comfortable. We don't want to die. And Michelle, last week you talked about like gardening. And I think about like a seed has to die to produce a new plant, which is similar to what you were talking about last week and how much we have to do that ourselves in imitating Christ. But I think the farther that we get away from following the biblical blueprint, then the more damage we see being done in and through the home. Yeah. I, and I, I think the one thing that I really want to emphasize, and I think we try to talk about a lot of family teams, is that, that the call to die is a call to both mothers and fathers. And that fathers, because I think part of the, the thing she's describing, the, the reaction that Gloria Steinem and other second wave feminists had was really in a sense that they were really angry about the inequality that was happening with mothers being asked to sacrifice and fathers not being asked to sacrifice. And I think at that level, we need to make sure that the, our reaction to sort of the gender problem doesn't result in damaging our own children. Like they can't be the casualties in some kind of battle between the sexes. But, but it is really important to say that becoming a mother or father is, is really a call to lay down your life. And I think that once career was seen as an ideal and that men could go off and form a superior identity to their family identity out in the workplace, it became an impossible temptation at some level that we were giving to women to say, no, we're going to have it all and you're going to be the one to bear all the sacrifices. And I feel that the answer to that, that we're constantly promoting is for men to try to lead the way and sacrifice any kind of career identity and say that my fatherhood comes first and that I'm primarily a leader of my, in my home and that when I go to work, I am providing for my family, not attempting to create a separate individual identity that will then help me avoid my identity at home as a father. And so I think, yeah, we're, we're in a really interesting bind that when you frame it as primarily an equal, a battle of equality, I don't think there's any way that children don't suffer the consequences from that. I don't think men are the ones who are going to suffer. And I think that that's what she's pointing out is that like, we have to be really careful with where we go with this and people like Gloria Steinem, who didn't have children, you know, they, they didn't, they weren't actively sacrificing a child in the, in the war that she was advocating, but a lot of mothers did. 